welcome to my video. For more educational videos, please subscribe, like, and share. Let's get started. Before doing your first YAG laser posterior capsulotomy, first you have to know more about your laser, the Nedmium YAG laser, and how it is working, the procedure itself, how it is done, the complications, and the types of the posterior capsule opacification. You have to know your machine well and you have to practice on paper before patients. YAG laser is an invisible laser with wavelengths 1064 nanometer doing photo disruption of tissues forming plasma and causing acoustic shock wave doing a hole in the tissues like the damage done by bombs thrown on innocent children of gas. And you can see here the photo disruption doing a hole in the capsule and you can see the plasma with the air bubbles and this is how the photo disruption and the plasma formation makes acoustic shock wave that open a hole in the posterior capsule On the day of the laser you have to counsel the patient and take the consent and uh, confirm the eye. It's better to be done after 6 months from the cataract surgery and uncomplicated cases. This is the human eye. It is like a ball. And if we take a section in this eye. When the light shines in front of the eye it passes through the cornea which is like the glass of the watch the front of the eye then the light passes through the opening in the colored part of the eye it is this opening here in the brown iris the iris is the colored part of the eye and then it passes through the lens which is like the lens of the camera here and this lens is enclosed inside a clear bag called the capsule of the lens then the light is focused by the cornea and the lens on the macula which is the center of the retina the light sensor structure in the back of the eyes here and then the light is focused on the retina then transmitted to an impulse inside the optic nerve to the brain to see a clear image When the patient develops cataract, the lens of the eye becomes cloudy and white like that. So the light cannot pass through the eye to the retina. So we cannot see a clear image. The only treatment for the cataract is to remove the cloudy lens through a very small opening inside the eye and to keep the clear bag then we put a clear transparent lens in the same place of the cataract then when the light shines in front of the eye the patient can see the light again and can see the clear image again in 10% of the people having cataract surgery the bag that is holding the clear lens becomes cloudy so when the light shines in front of the eye 
it cannot be focused on the retina and the patient cannot see a clear image again. The idea of the YAG laser is to do an opening in this cloudy membrane here that forms behind the clear lens. After YAG laser posterior capsulotomy, we have made an opening here in the cloudy membrane that forms behind the lens. So this cloudy bag now has been cleared and when the light shines in front of the eye, it can be focused by the artificial lens on the retina and transmit the image through the optic nerve so we, the patient can see the clear image again. Indications of EIG laser posterior capsulotomy is significant posterior capsular opacification with reduced vision of excessive glare and capsular block syndrome or reopacification which is rare if the opening is small. The benefits is improvement of the quality of vision and this is a case of significant posterior capsule opacification. You can see here the whitish opacity. The contraindication is to have corneal edema or opacity, inability to fixate the eye or uncooperative patient or child. And in this patient the vision was a counting finger. So it is very significant. The complications of the capsulotomy procedure is the floaters, which is very common. It might last for about six months to one year. Rise of the pressure of the eye, inflammation, IOL pitting or damage, cystoid macular edema, retinal detachment, or endothomitis, which is very, very rare. And here under higher magnification, you can see the opacity of the posterior capsule. There, there are three types, the Ilchnik pearls and the fibrosis and wrinkles. This Ilchnik pearls type is the easiest one to start with and it is proliferation of the lens fibers. The second type is the fibrosis. And in this case, the vision is not deteriorated much, but there is more glare. But um, the opening of the capsulotomy will not be ideal in these cases so it is a difficult cases my advice is to start with the case having ilchnik pearls because it is the easiest and the best results the third type is the wrinkles on the day of the laser make sure that the patient is well dilated by using tropicamide 1% and phenylephrine 2.5% and using alpha agonist to reduce the intraocular pressure as apraclonidine 1% eye drops. Then we use the topical anesthetic eye drops as proxy metacaine 0.5% eye drops. You have to make sure that the machine is working well and it is on the correct YAG mode. And to make sure of the settings, the pulse one pulse per burst and the energy I advise you starting with 3 millijoules and this is the joystick and the button for firing the laser on the top of the joystick then the aiming beam make sure the defocus which is very important to be posterior by about 300 microns 
you can use 150 but I advise 300 in the beginning and the energy knob on the sides as well and the eye pieces you make sure you adjust it to your refractive error and if you are using your glasses you can put it on zero and the IPD has to be adjusted to have a binocular view and this is the fixation light that the patient can fix on during the laser and this is the state lamp make sure you know your machine well and the elbow rest is very important in focusing the laser then the chin rest and the mark for lateral cancers this type of laser machine if the laser aperture and the slit lamp are coaxial it is not working and it gives you an interlocking error so if the slit lamp is oblique the laser is working and if it is coaxial like that it is not working and there will be a slit interlock and the laser is not working so you make sure that you know that in this type of machines so when the slit is oblique the laser is working and now you are ready bring the patient dim the light turn the machine into the ready mode and use the safety goggles make sure it is the correct one close the room and make sure there is no windows opened and make sure that you know about the laser safety turn on the laser warning it is better to use a contact lens with a coupling eye gel this will help you in your first few cases then you practice on Amster grid paper on a tissue box this was done by one of our trainees it gives you the experience and the sense of the focusing the laser machine and using the contact lens as well so I advise you if you haven't done any egg laser to start on this type of paper and make the cruciates in the central spot of the Amsler grid and you can do this five spots so you can see here it is very well done then from the patient view it is not painful you just tell the patient that the light will be very bright this is the only annoying thing the, there is some clicking sound in the back of his head this is normal and he has to open both eyes and look straight and look to the fixation lights when I put the contact lens I tell the patient to look up and then you put the contact lens with the coupling eye gel and avoid the air bubbles so then the patient can look straight ahead make sure you avoid the reflections from the lens and make sure the focus is okay
So you begin in the periphery of the lens. I begin up and then I go down the same crochet incision that we have discussed in our previous videos. Then you go to the sides, the nasal and the temporal side, and you can see here the photo disruption and the plasma formation and the air bubbles. All of this will settle down after you finish the laser. So at the end, you are aiming for this nice diamond shaped opening. And don't go beyond the optic of the interocular lens. Use iodine after the laser, one drop of apricronidine, and instruct the patient to avoid rubbing his eyes for about four hours. The vision will be blurry for 20 minutes after the laser, then it will come back. I usually use dexamethasone eye drops uh, four times per day for two weeks. And this is the opening. This is before and after. So the vision was on the left hand side was counting fingers before the laser. Now after the laser the vision is 6-5 and the patient is happy with his clear vision.